Well, Marina Gorbis is the executive director of Institute for the Future. She says unemployment will keep climbing as robots replace us, and she joins us now live from California. Welcome, Marina. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining us here on this Friday. Thank you. Well, Marina, you actually think you and your researchers say we should get used to the unemployment rate at 10 percent or perhaps higher for the next generation. Yes. Behind these numbers, there are monthly numbers, unemployment numbers. They're hiding a larger picture, which is that we're, we're in the midst of this transformation that is changing how we are organizing our economic activities. And they're largely driven by technological forces of two kinds. One is just connective technologies, communication technologies that are changing economics of the game. So what you previously needed a large organization to do, whether it's to produce a music video or publish a book or produce a film, now it's possible for individuals or groups to do it outside of the organizational boundaries. So values is being drained from existing organizations. So that's one kind of technological force. The other one is automation, which is robotics and just software and other kinds of automation. And if you look at data for the last 30 years, you see consistently that the kind of jobs that are routine, that are repetitive, that can be really automated, have been automated. What's also interesting that it's not just we started with manufacturing where this was happening, but increasingly that's moving into white collar workforce. So things that are knowledge based or white collar jobs or service jobs that are routine, whether it's clerical work, administrative work, uh, travel, all of those things are becoming automated. But I think the bigger question, Marina, is how are our children being prepared for this? I mean, one of the things we tend to talk about in the U.S. is that we are our educational system lags behind some of the other countries, emerging countries, in terms of math and science. So how are we going to prepare the kids for the future? Yeah, and the way I think about it in terms of what kind of skills do we need our kids to have. So going back to that idea that everything that's repetitive, that routine, eventually will be automated and programmed. So then you start thinking, well, what kind of things we cannot program? What kind of things that are non-routine, that are non-programmable, that cannot be codified? Those are all the kinds of skills that our need, kids need to have. We often talk about higher level thinking. Well, that includes a lot of different things. We need skills in storytelling, in different kinds of media. Video is a replacing text as a big means of communication. So media skills literacy in multiple kinds of media, social you, skills. Marina, do you think maybe the traditional school is no longer where children get those skills? Do they, you know, they are children, I know from having to myself, they bombard themselves with that type of information outside of school. Absolutely. I think there are so many different places where kids can learn things. I love the first robotics competition that a lot of kids are involved in, which is project-based, multiple kinds of skills, also teaches kids how to collaborate and work in teams and solve projects and problems. Uh, Maker Fair, all kinds of making experiences, DIY, do-it-yourself culture. We're we taking just had a look, a I think, here, a video from one of these robotics uh, competitions that you mentioned. Um, Marina, let's take a quick look, though, at some of what factories might look like. I know that um, there are a couple companies that are already sort of on the leading edge of this. We, Google has a, has a self-driving car, but there's also an entire factory, I believe it's in China, that actually I could it's operate. In Japan. It's in Japan that operates unmanned. Yes. There's a Fanuc is a robotics manufacturer, so it's a factory that actually produces robots, and it can be without unmanned for 53 days, I believe, 24 hours um, a day, nonstop, without heat, without uh, ventilation, obviously machines working on this factory. But increasingly, it's just not just those extremes, but if you go into factory floors, a lot of manufacturers, you see fewer and fewer people there. And you say even, I know that Deer is also has sort of robotic systems that they use as well as Kiva Systems, SRI International. These are all companies that you think are well positioned to take advantage of this robotic renaissance. Right. From different kinds of perspectives, Kiva has an automated logistics system. All the car manufacturers, whether it's ag equipment or just car manufacturers, has 
projects designing automated vehicles. Obviously, Google has a project in that. Um, in surgery, there are robots in, increasingly used, like Da Vinci Systems. SRI has a project, TraumaPod, uh, which uses remote surgery and remote diagnosis. So across many, many domains, we see these smart machines entering the workforce and our work environments in large numbers. All right, Marina, thank you so much with a very interesting look at what our future is, future may look like. Thanks so much, Marina Gorbes.